Her one, I'm just, well, I'm sorry, these are just moving around too much. I know what you're probably thinking right now, and the answer is no, these are not somebody else's dentures that I just put into my mouth. Anyways, can you relate to that? Does your denture feel loose, it's not stable, you can't chew, speak, eat like you used to? Well, then this video is for you, and I'm here to tell you that there's hope and there's something that we can do for that. I'm Dr. Joseph Hulick, let's have some fun. Earlier this year, I met a patient named Jack. When Jack first presented to our office, he pulled out his lower denture. He said, Doc, I got to do something about this lower denture. It's driving me nuts. The thing just won't stay in. I can't hardly eat or speak or really chew with it in. Even with all the adhesive in the world, this thing just slides around. Is there anything that we can do for this? And I told him, yeah, of course, there's something that we can do for this. Um, and then I asked him, if your denture, if you still took it in and out, but we just kind of clipped it onto some implants and it felt more secure, is that something that you'd be happy with? And he said, yeah, that would be amazing. So I'm gonna show you what we do with Jack, but first I'm gonna tell you guys what the clip-on dentures or the implant-supported dentures really are. So what is an implant-supported denture? Well, there's two types. One that you take in and out, and the other one that's actually screwed down. For the sake of this video, we're gonna be talking about the snap-in denture. But the first thing that we need to do before we kind of go down that road is we take an X-ray or a radiograph to make sure that you have, that you're even a candidate, that you have enough bone width and height to place the implants. And then step one is typically what we do is we place the implants, let those heal. A lot of patients will refer to these as kind of the studs. And then what we do is we'll make the denture to then fit with where the implants are. Now, if you have an existing denture, sometimes we can actually fit your existing denture to the implants that we place. But I found it best to, even though you might save some money with that, to make a new denture, just to make sure the thickness of the denture is sufficient everywhere to avoid fractures and things like that. So we've got step one, take the x-rays to make sure that you're a candidate. Number two, we place the implants. Number three, we then make the denture and when the denture is teetotally done, this is the removable one, but what you'll have are, they look like little buttons inside of the denture. And what you do is then you will just kind of snap it in place, kind of like a pearl snap shirt or a little button. So you've got the post in the mouth and then the, the denture, which has basically kind of like the little buttons in it. And you, what you'll do is you'll just kind of clip it right into there and it'll be a game changer as far as making your denture feel more secure. So if you're wanting to do the snap-in denture, how many implants will you need? Well, every patient's gonna be different and it does vary. The general rule of thumb is on top, if we could get at least four to six implants, that would be great. Just because your bone is a little bit different up top as well as your anatomy and it typically requires more implants to support the denture. On the bottom, ideally we're looking at anywhere between two to four implants to be able to adequately support the denture and hold up over time. A great example and analogy I give patients is think about the legs on a chair. So a chair that has four legs, you sit into it, it's comfortable, it's stable, you don't have to worry about it collapsing or anything like that. Now imagine every time you, if you removed one of the legs and all of a sudden the chair had three legs, you'd still be able to sit in it and it would be comfortable, but it would require a little bit kind of more adapting and a little bit more of your attention to be able to kind of sit and maintain your position in the chair. And that's similar to implants. Generally, the rule of thumb is the more implants, the more stable the denture is going to be. And as you start working down from there, the less stable the denture is going to be as far as rocking or maybe tilting back and forth. So if you find this video kind of boring or maybe not very helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up below. Or if it has been helpful, a thumbs up would be great as well. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. So as far as some of the pros and cons, pros, obviously it's gonna be a more stable, better fitting denture that's gonna be more retentive in your mouth. And depending on how many implants we place, sometimes we can then start to remove some of the denture so that doesn't feel as bulky in your mouth. Now, as far as the cons, these can be costs. Obviously it's more costly than a regular set of dentures, but it's also not quite as expensive as far as the ones that you don't take in and out. Even with the best placed implants or depending on how many we can place or where we can place them, the denture might still have a little bit of movement to it. Obviously at this route too, you're still, you still have a denture that at the end of the day you are taking in and out. So if that's something that bothers you, this may not be the best solution. But overall, I found it to be a really great cost effective way to give patients um, the stability and support that they need as far as wearing the dentures and feeling more confident in their day to day life. 
Now, where were we with Jack? The first thing that we did was we took an x-ray that went all the way around his head that showed me his bone width and height to determine how many implants we could place and if he was even a candidate. We decided after looking at this that we could place four implants, which would give him the security and the stability that he really wanted with, those bot with that bottom denture. Once we determined that he was a candidate, we planned the surgery and we made a surgical guide. I'm gonna do a separate video on this, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So imagine that this is his bone and based off the x-ray, what we do is we make a little guide that looks like this. Let me see here. Um, let me get out of the way. Yeah. So then what we do is we rest that on the bone or the tissue and then that tells me exactly where the implants go the day of the surgery. So after we place the implants and they've healed and he wore his old denture over the, the uh, other implants as they were healing, we placed these little attachments here or these copings that way we could start to make the new denture. And you could see like how flat his bone is. That's part of why the denture was, was kind of so flopping and moving around to begin with. So we, after everything was healed, we placed these to begin the process of the new denture. Then eventually we place these little attachments on top of the implants. So you can see there's our four implants that we've placed guided to have them kind of in the most ideal position we can. And then lastly, here is the denture that is snaps into that. And we delivered this just before Thanksgiving and this was a total, total game changer for him. He was so excited that we're actually getting ready to do the top arch next. So, Studies actually show that implant supported dentures have been shown to improve the quality of life for the patients that have them. So compared to their old set of teeth that were moving around, the implant supported ones, it basically gives them kind of a new sense of, of confidence and they're able to chew, speak, digest, kind of basically everything better than what they typically would with their regular set of dentures. Thank you guys for your time and for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out more of our content and our page. Thanks everyone.